What's up everybody? Welcome to BRS Fresh. Today we are doing some really cool Fresh to Gates experiments about your comments that you've sent in. Does Sirius Stone really raise your pH? Does it matter where you put your canister filter? Does glue really harden when it hits water? Those and many more, we're getting into them right now. Stick around. The first comment that we're going to address is, does it matter where your canister filter is placed? And what I'm finding is that between the two of these, the flow is actually pretty similar. But the question now is which one actually works better? And the way we're gonna find that out is we're gonna create a cloud and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna find out which one cleared it up faster. So stick around. So another really popular comment that's come in, some have been statements, some have been comments, is whether or not glue automatically dries when it hits water. Let's find out. So I've got a couple different glues here. I've got a liquid super glue and I've got a gel super glue. And I've also got this Instaset accelerator, which if you've seen any of the glue videos that I've done, you know that that is a favorite of mine. Let's take a look at this super glue right here, this gel glue. Question is, does it automatically dry or harden when it hits water? Let's find out the answer. So the first thing that you'll notice is right off the bat, as soon as it gets in the water, there's nothing dry about this, okay? It's definitely not drying. On top of that, if I move it around a little bit like this, like you might if you're gluing things together, little pieces and flakes of glue start to fly off into your aquarium. I don't love that. It also is getting this white milky look to it as it starts to dry slowly. And that's going to not look great in your aquarium either. So ultimately, does gel super glue dry immediately on contact with water? The answer is no. But there is something you can do to make your gel super glue hard right before it gets into the water, and that's use an accelerator. So check this out. I'm gonna hit this with an accelerator like that. Let's say I was holding my plant to it. Um, now, if it was a rock to a rock, I'd be doing a different technique. But right now, if this was a plant or something like that, I would have held the plant there, hit it with the accelerator. And now let's put that in the water. And I would say it's been about 10 seconds and that is rock solid. And more importantly, or as important, it's got a clear look to it versus that milky white look that the other one had. So this is going to end up looking better in the aquarium if any of it happens to be showing right after you glue. All right, so another comment that comes in quite a bit is what happens with glue spots on driftwood and what can I do about it? Really, really easy, you guys. Here's an example right here in this aquarium. I've got a glue spot right there. It's that big white chunk. Um, yeah, it's just hardened. It's unsightly. You can cover it with a rock. You can cover it with plants like this Anubius is covering two glue spots. But if you don't like it and you don't want to cover it, take the piece of wood out and let me show you what you do. All right, so there's a couple glue spots on this piece of wood right here, and you'd be surprised. These are gonna break off that easily. If you have one that's a little bit more stubborn like that, I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm either gonna grab a pair of pliers like this, and I'm just gonna squeeze and break it off. In a couple of, uh, couple of moves, that will be gone. You can also grab a blade, and you can just give a little bit of a carve, and you'll see that you're going to expose some new wood but that is going to color back to the rest of the woods color in just a matter of probably days or a week. So don't worry about that, but that's all you gotta do to get rid of those glue spots and your wood's good as new. Another comment that came in was, where should I put my check valve or does it matter where I put my check valve? I think the answer is yes, but I've never actually tested it. My preference is to put it up here high. And the reason is I think it prevents any issues from the back siphon causing problems getting CO2 back up and running once it has turned off for the night and it started up again in the morning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the CO2 to emulate CO2 shutting off at night. Then we're gonna turn it back on and we're gonna find out which one starts up more efficiently or if one of them has trouble starting up at all and we'll figure out which one's the best setup. It's been four hours since we turned off the CO2. Water has come up the tubes a little bit on the inside of the tanks. We're gonna turn the CO2 back on, see if there's any difference in the startup and then we're gonna test one more thing out with this. And I actually timed it a minute and 42 seconds. And I gotta be honest with you, as I look at this, these both fired up at literally the exact same time. So really in this scenario, there was no difference in how quickly this turned on with where the check valve was placed. As long as there was no back siphon issue, you know, where the tube had filled all the way with water. But that is something that we can test and I do think that that might matter. So I wanna find out. So I'm gonna fill these tubes up to the check valve with water to simulate 
if there was a back siphon situation all the way to the check valve. And then we're gonna turn the CO2 back on and we're gonna see if one of these takes longer than the other to fill up. Let's find out which one starts up fastest. I gotta be honest with you, I was in camp high check valve before we started this experiment. From what I'm seeing, I don't think there's a reason why you have to have it up here or you have to have it down here. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm aware that if you look up this stuff, you're probably gonna find more about keeping it high than keeping it low. But from what I've seen here, it's not making a difference. So comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Um, I can tell you though, at the end of the day, the reason why you have a check valve is purely to protect water from coming back down. If you had a leak or a reason, a negative pressure that would bring water back down the tube that could affect your solenoid down here. That's why it's there. It's to protect your expensive equipment. Um, from what I can tell, it has nothing to do with whether or not your CO2 is gonna work properly in your system. So another comment I got was, does Sirius Stone send your pH through the roof? Right here, I've got 50 pounds of Sirius Stone in a 75 gallon tank, which is in the middle of a transition. So a little bit of an Easter egg for you. This is gonna be something cool later, stick around for that. Right now, I'm running a 7.83 on pH here, on the digital pH meter. And yeah, that's because the Sirius Stone is probably raising this pH maybe a full point higher than it otherwise would be if it was a more inert stone. Even if the calcium here is dissolving out of your Sirius Stone in more acidic water, I don't think you're gonna run your pH to a dangerous level. Check this out. I happen to actually, just out of curiosity, run this exact test on the NT Labs test kit right here. And I would tell you like well, using my eye, I would read this somewhere between 7.5 and eight, which is pretty impressive that this test kit came out exactly the same as a digital reading. Shout out to NT Labs. We're back right where we started. Four hours has gone by. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty impressed with how well both of these did. We set up a pretty nasty aquarium for these to clear up, but we gotta pick a winner here in this little investigates. And I will tell you that in my opinion, this one is clear with the canister filter below the aquarium. So if you're asking the question, will a canister filter work if it is alongside your aquarium? The answer is absolutely yes, it will work. The canister filter below your aquarium seems to be more effective than a canister filter next to it, at least within the time frame that we gave it. If you guys like this style of video, let me know in the comments because we got a lot more that we can do and make sure you subscribe for a lot more content and we'll see you next time.